Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Breakdown. This is a show where we take the visuals from your favourite films and TV shows, break them down for you, and then build them back up in the simplest way that we know how. And we've Game of Thrones season five having just wrapped up. We thought it'd be a great time to explore one of our favourite and often unnoticed visual effects from the show. And in case you missed it earlier, here it is again. <laughs> of course, we're talking about the effect of running someone through with a sword. This effect only really has one kind of use, but it can be applied in different ways. One of our favourite examples from Thrones is where it's used to drive a dagger through a face or to decapitate a horse. Now, we can't show you the clip, but we'll leave a link in the description to take you to a VFX breakdown that shows it in action. So, how's it done? Well, it's actually more simple than you might think. You start by buying two or three swords that are either exactly the same or similar enough that you won't be able to notice a difference in motion. One of those swords is your hero prop. This is the most realistic and expensive one of the three. Typically, this will be a real or dull replica sword, but if you can't afford one on your budget, you can make do without it. The second is your stunt prop, the one you'll see when it's being swung around near your actors. This one only has to look good for a middle to wide vocal length. That's because they're normally made of foam, so it doesn't hurt if you hit someone with it. Ours was made out of wood because we couldn't afford a metal one. And the wooden one was a close enough intermediate between the two that it would actually look good on camera, but wouldn't actually kill someone if you hit them with it. The third sword is your VFX prop. This is the one you saw the blade off roughly a third of its length away from the hilt. That way you can add the rest back in later and your actor still has something that can influence their performance. Now for this particular shot, we, show, we chose a difficult angle. As you can see here, the hilt of the blade and the back of the opposite actor are visible at all times. This means that any jiggle in the hilt has to translate to the digital sword, which causes issues when the back of the actor moves around, contrary to the blade being there. What you want to do is have the hilt and CG blade visible at the same time just long enough for the brain to register that it's real and then hide the hilt behind the actor so the inconsistencies won't be visible. So now we build a 3D replica of the sword in our 3D modelling application of choice. Once your sword is modelled, it's time to match move. You can use an object tracker, but this shot was short and fast enough that we could get away with tracking it by hand. Upon finishing that, model and match move some rough geometry to match the back of your other actor. This will serve as your mat when the sword pushes through him as well as catching the shadows that are cast by the blade. Now that's done, it's just a matter of some quick lighting, rendering out your passes, and then jumping over into your compositor. Here you can see we're using After Effects, but you can composite in any software you like. Now it's just a matter of general compositing, matching up your colours and compiling your passes. Don't forget to soften your CG to match the source fudge, and then it's motion blur time. Motion blur is your friend. Use it, care for it, build a strong relationship with it, and then maybe one day, when you're both ready, talk about moving your relationship to the next level. What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, the last step is to add on a little grain. Sometimes this can be hard to do, so a little tip is to shoot a couple seconds of footage on your camera with the lens cap on. This will give you the actual grain and noise pattern that's embedded in your footage. You should now have something that looks like this. It's not too convincing on its own, but after a grade, some sound design, a little clever editing, you should have effectively sold the illusion of someone being stabbed to death until they die. And as a footnote, if you're actually taking a die for you, intentionally or not, <laughs> did you get it? Did you get it? Please say you got it. It's a good idea to ask a throw afterwards. And if you're an actor taking a dive, suck it up. Suck it up. Suck it up. And that's your Game of Thrones run through, broken down. That means it's time to build it up nice and simple after this. This episode is brought to you by the Tempered Pixel Shirt Store. Brand new film and TV themed shirts available every t shirt Tuesday. Discounted for the first 24 hours. Favorites include Fix It On Set, Render Time and Roto Monkey. Buy yours now at the first link in the video description. All right, this next technique is so old school, you'll probably be surprised to find it's still actually used very often in conjunction with the previous method. Here it is. And all right, you just shove it under the armpit, it's literally child's play. But that said, there's a couple of simple tricks to make sure it translates well onto camera. The first of which is perspective. The action needs to happen parallel to the camera. If the angle is off, it becomes painfully obvious that you're doing it. And if you look carefully at some of the crowd battles of Game of Thrones, even they're guilty of it. The second trick is your focal length. Using a wide lens will pull this trick apart at the seams. 
but a telephoto lens will compress this space and push everything it sees closer together. This way, even if you're missing the action by a wide margin, the shot looks convincing with the added bonus of nobody being stopped. This is the same technique often used to sell punches in fight scenes and it's so simple that anyone can use it. And that's a wrap. You're now fully prepared to make your own epic fantasy worlds come to life. I would suppose a screeching halt depending on how you look at it. Let us know what you think we should break down next in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to us.